Hey everybody, this is Brian and welcome to the 48th LAMP tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing how to create a database and add some tables. So in the MySQL workbench we're just going to click the little database icon where it says create a new schema and we're just going to call this MyStore hit apply and this is the actual SQL code that's getting sent to the MySQL server. Create schema and then in single quotes my store. Now notice how a string needs to be in quotes. Create means we're creating something, we're creating a schema or a database, and its name is my store. Just hit apply. Alright, now we have our database, but there's no tables, no views, no routines. So we're just going to right click, create table, and we're going to call this TBL customers. Notice how this first column here is automatically created for us, ID TBL customers. ID stands for identifier. What we're doing here is we're making our identifier row. We're going to select PK for primary key. Notice how the icon changes to a little key. We've briefly talked about this in other tutorials. A primary key is a way of identifying this specific row of information. Think about it. If you've got a thousand customers, What's the chances you're going to have four or five John Smiths? Well, you need to know the differences between those John Smiths. They need a unique number called a primary key. So we'll select PK for primary key, NN for not null, meaning it cannot be empty, UQ for unique, meaning it must be a unique number, and we're going to jump over well, to AI, auto increment. So what we're saying here is that it's going to be the primary key, can't be null, has to be unique, and it will auto-increment itself. Whew, that's a mouthful. Now we're going to say first name. Notice how it automatically fills in varicare45. You remember from our previous tutorials that this is a text type, and we're saying it can have up to 45 characters. And we're going to say last name. Boy, I cannot type tonight and let's just say age. Now age is a number type so we don't want a text type in here so you just drop down and you could say int but that would be kind of wasting space I don't know many people that old and you see wow there's a lot of data types we didn't cover. The reason for that is there's so many that well we'll never really use them in these tutorials like multi polygon we're not going to use that. We are going to use tiny int though because that's 0 to 255. So you can feel free to explore things like indexes. That's a way of how the data is actually stored. Foreign keys, um, we're not going to really get into this right now, but a foreign key would be, think of like you have a purchase order for your store. You have a customer and a product. A customer is buying a product. Well, you'll have a purchase order table, and each row in the purchase order will have its own primary key. The foreign keys would be the customer ID and the product ID. Triggers, you can actually write triggers so that if something happens, like this row is deleted, it'll actually go out and do other things. Partitioning, we're not even going to touch. And options, you can go in and just kind of explore some of the other options. Go back to columns, hit apply, and this is the actual SQL command that's going to be generated for us. Create table, and then here's our database name, my store dot table name. That's basically called a namespace. What we're doing is saying database.table name, and then we're going to, in parentheses, that's our command. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. Look at that. Now we have a table called customers. So let's go in here and just explore this. Select 1,000 rows and there's no data in here because we haven't added anything yet. So that in a nutshell is how you do that. We're just going to make another one here. We're going to make a... Oops, I just clicked edit table, didn't I? Yeah, I did. We're going to create table. We're going to say TBL products. And we're just going to say uh, product name. 
Now, some standards would actually have you separate out like that, and put an underscore. All right, so let's say cost. And we're just going to go down here. Find the double. There we go. So now we have a primary key, a name. Actually, let's just call that. Description and cost. We're just going to apply. There's our statement. And there we go. So now we've got two tables. We have our customers and our products. Pretty neat. Pretty simple to understand. Now we can actually go in and edit the data. Whoops. For this. And see how it says select star from database table. Well, this is called a select statement. This is how you actually select information from this. And there's nothing in there because we haven't added anything yet. We're going to cover the insert statement real quick here. We're going to send a SQL editor. And notice how you have select all, insert, update, delete, and create. A select statement will select information. We're saying select all. We're going to get into select in another tutorial. It's a little complex. Insert is a little easier. You're just inserting information into the database. Update means you're updating existing information. And delete means you're deleting it. Now create means you're going to actually create the table. So what we want is insert. Oh, hi kitty. Uh-oh, kitten's awake. I can hear her meowing. We're going to get rid of this because that's our primary key. It's auto increment. I swear, I am invisible to this cat until I start recording. Notice how I added these quotes. First name and last name, because they're string types, you need quotes. So we're just going to say Brian, and you can add your name. Really, kitty, go find a hobby. Go, go tear apart the Christmas tree. I'm, I'm trying to record a tutorial here. Sorry, cat really wants my attention. So the structure of this is insert into database, table name, and then our fields. And notice how they're in, in parentheses. Then we have a value list. This looks an awful lot like an array, doesn't it? Well, you'd be right. It is an array. And then there are values. And they have to line up one for one. For example, our first value is our first field. Our second one is our second one. Third one is our third one. Notice how these are in single quotes because they're strings, basically, they're labels. All right, we've executed that. Now let's go back out here, select for some information. You see how we have our, our little record in there? Notice how there's a one in there, even though we never added a one. That's because that was the auto increment. That's our primary key field. Let's add another row in here. We're just going to change this data. And now we have two of them. Notice how it says one, two, because that's our auto increment field. We have Brian and Heather, and they're two different ones. Now let's add Heather again, just to see what happens. Notice how there's two Heather Karens, but the primary key is different for each one. That's why you need a primary key, to distinguish between these two Heathers. Although, as my daughter would say, there can be only one. <laughs> so that's all for this tutorial. We're going to get a little in-depth on the other commands here very soon. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this educational and entertaining.